Do, 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 do. Hold up. Let's get this in focus. Right, there we go. Good evening, young Nick. How you doing, mate? Good to see you. You can't see me. I'm hit up for a change. <laughs> Put this across. Sorry about the lighting. Good evening, Freddie. How you doing, fella? Whew, it'll be one of them days. Well, it seems that my internet is fairly well fixed. We'll see tonight. It says I'm getting a decent spit rate. Yeah, I'm good, fella. Thank you. Spit rate, bit rate. Um, so, we're coming in today. I've got brand new... B17F to look at in 148 scale, so it's all good. But we're going to do it tonight. What I've also done. Good evening, Fernando. Yeah, it's been a pain in the butt, mate. Really has. Um, the model that we're going to review tonight literally arrived today while I was at work. It's big it's something that i've been looking forward to i have no idea what's in the box yet but we'll come to that in a minute i said about half seven so i've got to leave it till half seven before i get the box out so i've got the hurt out just to sort of sit there and look pretty for a minute um next week i'll be back in front of the camera because i ain't had a shave i had a shower but i ain't had a shave tonight so i look a mess but hey we're doing a review so it's better to have the light the camera above what i've also done i've got myself a um a special battery pack which connects directly to the mains so that's going to work i'm also going to get another camera set up so we can have two cameras on the go at once so i've worked out how to do it it's just i don't trust the internet really so tonight i'm going to stick to just the one camera um, it could also be my computer overheating, but we'll have to see what happens, aren't we? Uh, um, we may also have Dudley arrive to see us. He's The door is open, and of course it's summer. summer so the window's wide open as well. Um, we'll just see how we can go on. And see how if this works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. If it does, it does. All good stuff. But we're going to do, from now on, it's going to be, there'll be one evening over the weekend. And we're back to the Wednesday night, as usual. I've worked it now, so they don't have to work late on a Wednesday night. So there should be no issues. I'll close that up. You can hear, probably hear a few little cars. We live in a, a row of six houses. And as soon as you start filming, you're guaranteed to get every man and his dog bring the car back. So, never mind. What's the time? 25 past. Well, firstly, have you seen the news where that's the reason I got the hurt out? This was the K, the British version. Um, they're now going up with a J version, which is the extended fuselage. Um, again, I'm going to really look forward to that. I love this kit when I built it. Are you coming in, Dudley, or not? 
Thank you. You can come in. He'll sit there. You might hear him wolf at the window. He likes just to tell everybody that he is here. So, yeah, going back. Svesda has brought out the J, or is going to bring out the J. We've seen some CAD renderings of what it's going to look like, and it looks absolutely superb. So, let's hope this is good. It goes together as well as this. All right, I'm going to put this out of the way. Now, it's done its job. Oh, bear with me. Kicking everything as we go. Dudley is up the window. So there you go. Well, here she is. The new, or newish, I think it's within a month, HK Models B17F Flying Fortress. Now, everybody knows the Memphis Bell because it was supposedly the first aircraft to do 25 missions over Germany, which is utter poop. The actual aircraft that did 25 missions over Germany first was an aircraft from my local airfield, which is Bungie, and it was a B-24. It was a Liberator. It wasn't... Um, I've got a horrible thing on it. It wasn't uh, the B-17. But the powers that be thought the B-17 was a little bit more uh dreamy if you like or people aspired to the b17 more than they did the so-called ugly liberator which i absolutely love it is a big aircraft i am building one at the moment as well on the side but that's going well so the reason they used this they got they did the documentary Everybody knows this aircraft simply because A, they did the documentary and then we had the Hollywood blockbuster that came out in what, the mid-80s? Or was it 90s? I don't know. 90s, I believe. The Memphis Bell, which uh, the Irish guys, who, let's be honest, mostly flew these, Irish-Americans. Um, they were a lot of the air, airmen that come across. Um, literally 100 yards from me was a barracks for Bungie. Um, which was an old mill, and the wall that they ripped out of it before they did it all up into houses and flats, which ruined it. Uh, the wall was taken down where all, a lot of the airmen had signed it, and is now at Norfolk and Suffolk Aviation Museum, which I believe I've got a photograph somewhere. So that's pretty cool. Anyway, that's uh, me running on a little raw rubbish, but there you go. Anyway, so you've got your box art, which is the infamous memphis bell or the famous infamous memphis bell whichever you want to call it she is a beautiful aircraft she's clean um i prefer the glass nose yep that's the way it is even a moose um <laughs> where was i oh yeah she she's a uh, she looks pretty, and I prefer the F to the G, or the A and B, even the C model, really. But the F had the beautiful glazed nose section. And I think it's the most streamlined and the biggest workhorse of World War II. I think it's fantastic. And as you can see, we've got the B-17 series. So presumably, I know they've got the G out. I hope they're going to build the A. I actually met the late, the wife of the pilot who brought the first A to the UK about 10 years ago. I believe she passed away, bless her. No, but she was a lovely one. Lovely lady to meet. And I enjoyed meeting her and seeing the photographs of her husband with um, the first A. Of course, the A for the British Air Force or the Royal Air Force at the time. Or the, that wasn't, it was Bomber Command at the time. Didn't make it. It wasn't, um, it didn't do very well. I think they lost six out of their 12 aircraft on the first mission. So it was a bit of a failure. And they uprated it all with more guns from 30 cal to 50 cal, which is going to rip a hole in anything if it hits you. So it's a fantastic aircraft. Um, we all know what it is.
So anyway, right. So like I said, I've never even looked at this. I I, I was been waiting this to come in. It arrived at Hannan's yesterday. Uh, not yesterday, Sun Saturday, and I had it shipped straight out to me. So again, I'd like to thank Robert Alclad for his ongoing support. I much appreciate it. Um, he supplied this for me. Now, the price is around about £100. But this is 148 So, you know, it's just quite a big bird for that sort of money. And knowing some of HK models before, I've looked at them and the the detail is amazing on them. And Richard, if he turns up, he's I think he's got the Lancaster and he's going to build that. But he did say there's a few things to look out for, so I'll keep an eye on that. But, yeah, what can I say? It's just, to me, the box art is phenomenal. You've got 109s going in on the forces of B-17s. But it's good artwork. It's one of the best artwork I've seen on an HK model, on a model for quite a while now anyway. So we're going straight into, so right, here we go. So Memphis Bell, to me, the color's completely wrong. For starters, we know that, but that's just a photograph or a painting, should I say. So we've got artistic license, and yet they've got the right colors on the ones down below. There you go. Me being picky. But I'm not a, what you call it, a river canner. So we've got 148 scale. Your number for this is 01 F002 B17F Flying Fortress by HK Models, the B17 series. We've got a wingspan of 658 millimeter, a length of 474 millimeters, and a number of parts 105. Now, we did have a version of this in 148, which was by Ravel. Now, I built that kit many moons ago, and it fell together. It was a fantastic kit. The only thing was it was outdated because it had raised panel lines. This certainly had, yes, in the day. Nowadays, I would rescribe them. To, but back then... It, I just wanted to get the glue on them and paint them and then put them on the side. But that's back then. Now, I'm more interested in the weathering and everything else that goes with it. Obviously, the Memphis Bell was heavily used, so they had different parts put on it, different colours. So we'll go have a look. Anyway, on the box, beautiful artwork as we've been through. As we go along the side, um, let me just put the auto back on just for two seconds so you can see we've got some nice CAD rendering of what we've got. Looks like we've got a full interior, um, a really nice looking nose section. It's all basically what's telling you what's inside. It looks really, really good, if I'm honest. The bomb bays, which was a tiny bomb bay as in today. On the ends, just a standard thing, nothing special. And on the other side, I haven't even looked at this. So we've got the B17F10BO, serial number 41-24485, Delta Foxtrot Alpha, 324th Bomb Squadron, or, yeah, Bomb Squadron, 91st Bomb Gritting Born, UK, 1943. And we also have the BF17F50BO, of serial number 425360 with the lettering Victor Kilo November 358 bomb squad of the 303rd bomb group of Molesworth. Now we all know about Molesworth when they put the nukes in their back. Well, they, they didn't actually, but there you go. Um, in that was late 1943. Um, sorry, but to this day, I still refuse to acknowledge that company. I have my reasons and it's, they're my reasons I'm sticking to. Um, I have my beliefs, and I'm going to stick to that. So, right, let's stick a servo off. We should be back to normal, all in focus. Right, nothing on the boat. No, nothing in the box. We've got an open top box, which it isn't sealed. But I promise you, there's been no tomfoolery. I haven't had a look. As you're seeing it, I'm seeing it. So, there's our box of goodies. All individually sealed, and there seems to be quite a lot of it. 
So, what we're going to do, I'm going to put this out of the way. I say out of the way, it's going to one side onto my box table when I can sort things out. Put that one over there. Right, we'll go straight in, dig to the bottom to see what we have. Oh. Now that's a nice touch. Just bear with me. We have our decals, our instructions. Now, I had no idea that this was in there. And I love the box art, and this is going on my wall. So we also get a nice print of the box art, which I think is a lovely thing to include. It's got a little mark on it, but I'm not worried about that. That'll, that'll just rub off. Hello, Alan. Hope you're doing well, mate. Cheers, buddy. I like that when they when the model makers include these. This was, I think, I don't know who started it off. Um, Eddard came out with a fantastic um, print for their bubble art, or their bubble top Spitfires. Um, loved it then. That's on my wall. So that is where mine's going. So I need to keep that nice and safe. I think that's fantastic. You got my thumbs up already. Right, so... We'll start off, as usual, with our instructions. Again, nice, glossy instructions and bigger than an A4, which I like. I think that's neat. You know, we got you. We keep getting the airfix. We were used to airfix. Everybody loves airfix. But their little paper sheets, although they're doing them in colour a bit more now, um, are still basic. Something like this is fantastic. So again, we've got the box art. We've got some information about the F on its own. It doesn't actually mention at all the bell. Uh, no, nope. excuse me. It doesn't mention the bell at all. It gives you just basic details about the aircraft. I actually still, I love this aircraft. And now that, whoa. Now, bear in mind, I've, Got a B-25 that Mr. Cross, was it Mr. Cross? I think it was Nick. It's one of the guys, anyway, sent me a one B a B-25 in one thirty second. And I must admit, I haven't, re I've looked at the thing, but I never opened the, looked at the kit, but I never opened the instruction manual. So I hope it's like this, because this, I hope you can see this. And that's on an A, um, an A2 cutting mat. So it shows the size of this. So and everything is like it's almost like CAD drawing, rather than it's more artwork than an instruction manual. It's absolutely fabulous, if I'm honest. And it's a nice shiny paper. It's not your ordinary cheap paper that comes along. Anyway, I digress. Right, let's move along. So we've got our seats going in in multiple parts, and we've got. Looks like we've got a small, we have got a small photo X sheet. So seats going on with the seat belts included. Well done, HK. I thought it was you, Nick. I'm going to build that before too long, I promise you. Have you still got your F-16, by the way? I love that by build. I absolutely loved it. But yeah, looking again, so it goes back onto the, onto the cockpit floor, which is an anti-skid coating. Your letters are all, they're all called out in that company. Um, but obviously, I'll do everything in old clad. We've also, again, got more seats going down. You've got, looks to me like the oxygen tanks are built into the side wall of the cockpit. Then you go onto the bomb racks. So we get rid of that. We get rid of the bomb straight away. People who know me know that I don't like doing armament, but I'll do the bombs on this. Because they'll be able to be seen, which I like. So, we've got your bomb racks going in. Typical vertical bomb racks they had in the 17. I think they had six bombs. That's all they could carry. Not very weight. Ah, oh, brilliant. I'm glad about that. I always wondered if you kept hold of her. But, um, yeah, so, we're going along. The hard wall going on. 
or the firewall going in between the cockpit and the bomb bay and the other end going on between the bomb bay and the tail section. Now, I wouldn't want to be walking across that when I was being hit by, by uh, flak, I can assure you. They're talking about an anti-skid coating going on. More um, your uh, belly gunner. He's gone down on the bottom there. So it looks like you can put him in later. Great for painting. I like that idea. I think that's a brilliant thing. You've got a decal for the, a, a, the, 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 the instrument panel. But I might look at the Quinter ones and see if they'll do ones for them and raise them up a little bit. They look a little bit nicer. So you've got open windows and closed windows with the guns going through on the waist, like waist gunners. Um, just looking, yeah, ammo boxes, oxygen tanks. So we've got the open and closed version. I like that. I like that a lot. Going through, we've got the side wall coming through and in. So this is all going on in one piece. Again, it's the way companies are doing them nowadays. Build them up in smaller parts and then fitting them all together. We've got the rear gunner section or rear tail section going in. More firewalls, more, excuse me, for the tail wheel. All going in, the, the right side guns going in. Then joining it all together with an opening door. Oh, it's getting sexy now. It's not often I get excited about a kit, but I do love a B-17. So we've got the nose. We've got a lot more equipment going in for the tail gunner. Um... The nose, the nose, the tail section going together, which the joint will be hidden up by the tail. Doesn't look like these are movable, which is a shame, but I presume it's fairly easy just to cut through and make it a little bit more uh, posable, let's say. Then we've got the glazing going down and a little bit of a gun sticking out of the top. Oh, that's the, the sights, I should say. And the guns will stick out the rear. Okay. We come on to the top section underneath. So this is the top of the fuselage going on. Guns going together. The 50 cows going together. A single piece windscreen, which is really nice. More glazing going down. More glazing going on the front nose section. Ah, so that's how they're doing it. Now, I haven't seen the G version, but obviously the G's got a... Um, an automated gun so that's why that's there i presume so that they can do this and the g version together i totally agree james 100 percent. i think they've done from what I, this has just amazed me just the, the the instruction manual it's so easy it's so good to look at that they've actually got the parts that you're using on the instrument panel on the instrument of uh, instruction manual Fabulous. Love it. Anyway, I digress. Coming through. So that's done. Then we come on to more work in the pit. And this is for the um, bomb aimer. So that's the lower level. And then the top level goes on top of there, which or a bit further back, but higher. Then we come back and the guns going in. Some framework going down. More screens going in. Those who know me know I won't be using those. I'll be using Microscale. Uh, crystal clear. Fred, you need to learn to use that, mate. You haven't lost your bit on your lane cast. I like that. Then we've got um, our bumps and lumps going on. Our pitot tube. Our radar. Or our radio section radar. And the front going on. And it looks like it's nicely done for masking. Not going to fail them on that at all. Very basic guns, but hey ho. Then we've got the tail planes going on in two pieces. They're two piece power planes. Oh, well done, mate. Back time you started. So we've got our top section going down on the fuselage. Tails going in and the nose section going down. Then we start on the ball turret, which looks very detailed again. What I'm looking for in this is how many pieces they've made the glazing in because that is the nightmare part. 
especially on the bigger versions, the 132nd James mentioned, the Liberal, that's Hobby Boss, that was awful. There's in about 30 different parts, but there you go. So the Bull Turret going together, your workings for the Bull Turret, they're all going on. <laughs> then you've got the top turret, that's all going in, going down nicely. We've got wheels, which look weighted to me, weight on wheels, I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, brilliant. And we're in the middle of the book because I've got the staples. So you've got the top turret going down, which looks like, to me, there's a lot of working gear in there, which are going to be lovely to paint. Some more little parts. Um, that's photo etch. They've called it EP. I presume they mean PE. Some more little out uh, external parts of photo etch for the outside. You've got either a closed bomb bay or an open bomb bay. Your belly turret or your your ball turret going in. Your rear wheels going on. Then your wings come together. And again, each section for the undercarriage bays are in multiple pieces. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. Six multiple pieces for the to put down as a section like it you've got posable flaps by the looks of it which makes which for some reason why if they've done that why haven't they done posable on the rudder and the um, ailerons oh well superchargers going on exhaust system on your engines which are basic cyclones going on to your open or closed i like that as well so you have it in flight or on the deck shut down. Weight on wheels with it looks like a good tread pattern on. Is it the right one? Yep. Standard good tread pattern. Then you come on to the other side. Exactly the same. Just the other side. And your props going on. Like that. I really do like that. Then the wings joining in. And Bob's your uncle. Fan is your aunt. Hey Cam. Yeah, that's what I think. That's what I thought, to be honest. But, uh, yeah, rear guns going on, top guns going on, which is nice you ain't got to put them on till the end because we all knock them off, let's be truthful. Then we come to our decals. Or we've got a decal piece, which is lovely. Then we've got our sprue call-outs, which, again, is fantastic. Then a beautiful coloured um rendering of both the bell and whatever that one is it doesn't say as the bell no, both the bell nice so we've got a two page of the other one which is has it got a name it's got a very naked lady on the front i'll give it that um old faithful so you got old faithful which is well known and melfus bell which is even more well known fabulous okay then you've got your um, call-outs um, for your paint. I'd like to think they would, James. It would be good. It's hard work building that. It's big. It doesn't fit on my desk, and I've got a big desk. So we've just got our standard colours, olive drab, neutral gray, flat black, flat yellow, so on, so on. We've got Gunzi and Mr. Hobby and Tamaya and that other company. Sorry, I can't even mention it. I don't like them. I think what they did was horrific or what someone did in that company was horrific. So I think that's awful and I will never have another piece of their stuff in my house. But that's me and my opinion only. Okay. Now, just remember, Guns is the only paint that I know of that Alclad will react with. So just be a little bit aware. So, yeah, fabulous absolutely brilliant so far i love that instruction manual i think they've done a fantastic job right let's go straight into our decals which is in one of these these bags are really nice actually yeah that's the one that certainly is the one yeah you're right it does it's called a garage mate Luckily, I haven't got to look after mine. It's going to the museum. 
Right. Trick with this, bend it over and fold it back down. That way you don't get sticky on our decals. So we have a decal sheet and we have a small photo etch, which you can't get out. Let's have a look at this. Put that there, just for the decals in a minute. All right, we'll just go over the photo etch slowly. Now, seat belts are there for the front pilot and, and um, co-pilot. Now, I like that. Just, to, just that. That's all you need in any kit is the seat belts. That is something that I think every woman should do. Every of them today. Even Airfix. That's all they got to do. Just put that in. Then we wouldn't go head out all the time and buy theirs. That, to me, is a good little add-on. And the metal wheel covers for the outside of the wheels on the bell because she had the plates put on them. So that's beautiful. And some little bit of etch to go around the guns on the waist guns. I I know it sounds like silly and excited about one little piece of photo etch, but that little piece of photo etch probably saves you a tenner. Time you've bought the seat belts and everything else to make it look right. You know, to me, that's worth every penny. So I'll put them away. I know I'm being fussy, but this is a kit I've been looking forward to for a long, long while. 32nd B29, that's huge. That's massive. I didn't even know there was a B, a 32nd. I thought it was 148. Okay, Moose, see you later, Don. All the best. Right. So, our decals. Very, very nice. They're, well, I just see who they're printed by. Oh, B17. Yeah, that's huge. That's massive. To be honest, in that scale, I'm finding it very hard to enjoy the bigger bombers because they are so big. And to me, it's it's you, you're fighting everything. I prefer this, personally. <laughs> One seventy second. That's me. I'm right. Anyway, I digress. Back to this. Now. We have our decals are printed by Cartograph. So we know these are probably the best you're going to buy or have in a kit. They're beautifully done. There is no carrier film on any of these. There is a little bit on the number, on the serials. We've got the two ladies, the blue and the red. You've got to be kidding me. Nearly. I thought that had Sally B on one side, but it didn't. That's the show. No, mate. I'm working on it still. I've had a few issues at home, so it took a little while. Oh, yeah. Easily that sort of amount. So, you've got DFA, obviously, Bell. You've got VKN, which is Old Faithful. Some beautiful and a very naked lady here, which is very, very nicely printed. And it's amazingly looking good. Very little stencil data, but all what we need is there. Be careful when you put this on Facebook because it has got the the double cross on it. But yeah, love it. And they're on a good piece of, of paper. They're not cheap and nasty. Yeah, you can get a Sally B setter. I do understand that, Fred. The thing is that these are cartograph. Now, why would you want to go and buy another set when you've got a cartograph set there? Possibly the best deck of producers in the world, in my opinion. So I'm just going to put them straight back in the pack. I don't want them scratched. Please bear with me. I'm being a pain in the arse right now. But I just want those safe. So don't get scratched at any chance of getting scratched. And that, that can go away. Right, let's find something juicy. Let's have a look at a new section. And don't get me wrong, I love the owner of uh, the Kits World. I think he's a fantastic, and he's, his lady is a lovely lady too. It's, it's just when they're with it. Oh my goodness! Sorry, I just seen something. Um, when the kit comes with 
a good set of decals why change that's my opinion sorry right this has got to come out because i've just seen the making of this kit right so this is what the right side of the fuselage now the first thing i notice is and i just saw it in the pack the riveting on this is incredible you could easily cut that rudder so you could make it poseable that's something we could do might even do that myself don't look on the inside mark the riveting i'm hoping this camera is going to pick this up can you see that on that tail there that is phenomenal can you see that there the way that's on that angle yeah see that buddy it's really 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 nice it looks good it's cleanly molded now you see all these they're ejection how they ejection oh wonderful good job callum nice to hear it mate now on the inside now richard did tell me to look out for ejection pin marks because he had some on his lancaster but there is nothing on the inside of that whatsoever you could have that opened up and you could have a look you can see the amount and it's good well molded i love it fantastic again brilliant job that's really really nice um the other side i won't get this out because it they are uniform they are exactly the same again fabulous and even the hard points or the the strengthening points us is fantastic love it right we'll leave that till last we'll carry on with the bigger stuff which is firstly the wings and this is all individually wrapped in bags so you know this is really really good okay right the wings have got strengtheners inside them fabulous there's a little mark i don't know if you can see that how well you'll see that can you see that white showing up that is where the injection was or the 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 plastic or the styrene was forced into the mold that one point there and to be truthful a couple of swipes with a standard stick jobs are good and there's raised detail. There is, I wish you could see this riveting because that is just, can I get that? Let's see if I can get that for you. You can't see it. But you, you can see the lines that go up there. The, there was another one there. There's uh, panel lines that go up. But in between all these panel lines, there is thousands, of, there's a thousand rivets on this bit alone. It is riveted to heck, which in real life it was. About £100, Callum, around about 115 or slightly less if you can get a deal. I think Vicky, of uh, Vicky, Nikki of Atranus was selling it a little bit cheaper. Um, to be honest, for detail on the 148 kit, yeah, it's a big bomber, but brilliant. Top of the wing section. Oh, that's fully hold. Oh, that's nice. So our exhausts, um, where the exhaust comes out on the wing, I don't know why I've got the camera around that way because you can see it better this way. They are see through. I don't know if you've ever seen my hand for them, but you can stay out, go straight through. Again, fabulously done. And the if I was a rivet counter and sat here, I reckon you'd probably get to three to four thousand rivets just on this wing. <laughs> what can you say? Incredible piece of work. Now, what does it go together like? Just out of interest. Because there's no nothing to cut off here. No sprues. It's all done for you. goes together absolutely spot on bit of tomorrow extra thin that 
wing join won't even be there and there's but there's detail on the end there so be very careful when you're doing it then of course you've got your posable flaps which we just said about if they made them posable hi steve why didn't they make the ailerons um the rudder movable but with the amount of detail on here it's worth spending that little bit extra time absolutely brilliant you've got your the other side which is exactly the same so we won't go over that we've got a couple of screws here and we get to oh my goodness. this is a kit that seems to keep giving um it's, it's, it's very very rare that i find a kit which I'm surprised at the quality of the mold that they've used. But this is one of those kits. We'll start off with the top. That, to me, is pretty, pretty good. If I... I need to bring you in, because this is just ridiculously good. Let me bring you right in and put the photo focus on just for a second. Sorry about that. It will come back, I promise. That's it. Now, I'm hoping that's going to pick that up. Can you see that riveting? And I'll get that wing out again. The riveting detail is just off the planet. It really is. And you, even on the nose section, right at the front, if you just catch it in the light, I hope you can see those rivets. Sorry about the camera auto-focusing, but that's the best way to show you. Right, let's put that down and do that just for a second. And look at the detail on the side walls with the oxygen bottles, the radios, engine quadrant. Everything is there and it's sharp. Okay, you can hear this, I hope. It's sharp detail. It's really, really nice. Let me pull you out again for a second. Um, let's uh, do that. Like that. That's it. It looks phenomenal. Everything's there. The ball turret, the turret ring, the radio systems, and the navigation systems. The firewalls are superbly molded. Everything about it is just fabulous. There, mm, on that bottom piece, there is ejection pin marks on that i'm not sure what that was for i believe it was for the belly probably will never be seen but there's ejection pin marks everywhere that sh they should be and certainly not anywhere which is going to cause us an issue let's take that up just a little bit higher this is a big old sprue so yeah very impressive that one I'm not going to apologize for this. I'm just going to, I need to show you the detail of the rivets on this way because this is just stupid. Let me just put this in so it autos. Ah, oh, now you can see them. Oh, come on. Focus your git. There you go. Look at those rivets. I've never seen riveting like that on a 48, 32, anything. Every one of those lines there between the panel lines is rivet detail. And it transforms all the way through, all the way to the wing edge. It's absolutely phenomenal. It really is. Sorry, I had to show that again. I don't apologize for it, really. Because I think that is absolutely fantastic. Then we have our tails, or tail planes. Let me take you out for a second. That's We've got our tail planes again. Rivet and detail is off the charts. We've got our bomb doors. Yes, I see what Richard is saying. Dudley's here, so if he barks, I'll just bring you back in. I know it's a pain in the butt. Do not stay focused. No, focus up. Thank you. Now, if you, I don't know if you'll be able to see it if I touch it in the light. 
can you see all those ejection pin marks in that bomb door? Now, if you've got your bomb doors open, every one of those has got to be sorted. If you're going to shower. So there's going to be a lot of work involved in that to do that. But there you go. We'll take it out. Stick it on focus. That's it. Right. So, again, tower planes are perfect. Bomb doors on the outside are fantastic. Inside, not so good. Looking at, we've got the bomb rack, or the top of the bomb rack looking good. Backs of the seats, they're basic, but then they were in the original thing. Hello, Roger. Did you get my email that I sent you? I did send you an email. Uh, yeah, seats are okay. Basic, as I said, but I hope they are what they are. We've got the bomb. Uh, bombers point at the front. Yep, lovely. Another good sprue. Wheels. Now these... I'm quite interested in. They are at this moment without building it, Steve. Right, I'll resend it when I finish this tonight, Roger. All right, mate. I did have a few problems with me in it. I did wonder if you got it. Um, without building it, Steve, yeah, worth under a quid of anybody's money. Easily. So far. The only thing I found that I don't personally like at the minute is the ejection pin marks in the Bombay. But, or Bombay doors, rather. So, but we're going through. This is the bottom of the um, undercarriage housings. It is a lot of plastic for 100 quid. I do agree. And the wiring and the pipe work and everything on there looks phenomenal. The wheels are fabulous, although we're going to cover up a lot of this when we put on the bells um, plates you've got the rear of the there's the undercarriage the doors they look fabulous as well they just glue on but your gun sight your Norton gun sight looking really really good your flaps are there they are posable but they are full of ejection pin marks so again that's got to be a, a point off, if you like, if I mark it out of 10. But, yeah, absolute, the, the Everything is so sharp and crisp. It's got the right tyre tread on. The right wiring and the wheels, like I said, will cover them up. But, a ho uh, The undercarriage is solid. And it's all in one piece. Apart from a couple of bits, you just glue on. Um, again, fabulous. Hi, Andrew. Don't be sorry, mate. Yeah, no. You got to remember, I'm not a rivet counter. I I'll say it as I see it. I'm I'll I'll be a hundred percent honest. But I I'm not going to go and hold this up to. The Memphis Bell and count how many rivets are in a wall. If I see this is detailed and it looks like a B17 when it's built, I'm happy. And to me, everything on this looks right. And I know a little bit about a B17, obviously, living where I do in East Anglia. So to me, this is looking really, really, really good so far. Right, then we come to the bombs. The guns, they are a little bit, oh, light years, absolutely light years ahead. The cyclones are very basic, but it's there. All you've got to do is put some wiring in just to liven them up. I know that's the sort of thing that Fred likes to do if he's still here. The bombs are basic, but they are what they are, bombs. Control columns are good, solid. Everything feels not clunky or yeah, that's good. Hello, mate. You know, <laughs> you 
you're the, you're the sort of person who would wire these engines up, the cyclones. They are basic, but they're all there. You know, what do you do? The control, everything on here, to, I was then saying, hello, young Richard. Sorry, mate, it's internet and a few other things that happened, and we're back. We talked about you earlier, actually. So the control columns, they're, clunk, they're chunky, but not clunky, if you know what I mean. They're, they're solid. They're the way they should be. Riveting on the doors. The gun barrels are all spot on. Yeah, they're one piece and probably um, a bit of brass. A brass version would look better. And that's the first bit I've noticed that's been moved on the sprue. We have. I, I thought we had open, but we've only got closed um, air areas. Bottom of the seat's looking lovely. Rear wheel is what it is, just a rear wheel. But yeah, fabulous. Richard HK is just going off the planet, mate. Right. So we're now just. For interest, we might go into the 29 minutes that I'll flick off and flick on again. No, don't be sorry, mate. Just send me another one. I'll, I'll reply to it this evening. Right. The rear of the control pan of the cockpit. Absolutely fabulous. Richard, is this the kit you got? Because you did tell me about the undercarriage, not the undercarriage, the uh, Bombay. And I agree, it's absolutely full of um, ejection pin marks. But yeah, apart from that, that is brilliant. Looking lovely. Guns for the uh, waist gunners are all in one piece. Yeah. So, yeah, that is correct. I mean, you'll either agree or disagree on me, but this has got to be one of the best kits that HK have sent out, apart from that. If it's anything like this B-17, mate, it's worth the money and well worth it. So, looking around. Yeah, everything's there. It's all looking neat and tidy. I mean, just to give you a close-up, I'm going to do this because I think you need to see this because this is just a bit of a... Come on, focus. That cockpit... Um, firewall is just full of detail. Wiring, cables, you name it, pipework, it's there. Even the extinguisher is moulded in. And it, like I said... It's a really nice mould. The instrument panel is very basic, but we knew it would be because of the aircraft. And there's a decal to go on to that. But yeah, fabulous. I'll keep us in for a moment. And I'll get this up. We've got the props to look at, which are just basic props, but they're paddle props and they look really, really nice. These are the correct ones. The nose cones for the engine nacelles, again, very nicely done. Look really good. But the reason I'm keeping you zoomed in is because we've got these. They're in a sealed baggie. This is properly sealed. So, obviously, these were specially made for the F. I even a knife ready just in case, look. And I want to look at these. And again... Let's get you in a focus up there so you can see the detail. Come on, focus. Oh, come on, think about it. There you go. I hope you can see that. The riveting on that is just incredible. Absolutely beautiful. Really nicely done. And both sides, not the same, but as they shouldn't be. And it's just, you know, blow your away time. I'm going to put these straight back in here so I know where they are. I'm just going to let that settle. 
like that. I'm going to keep you zoomed in because we're coming at the glazing section. That's always the most important thing. Now, I have put this camera onto a direct connection with the electric. We haven't had the 30 minute cutoff. Yay! Bonus. That's solved that issue. And that means we can do a much longer time. Right. Oh, we've got, we've still got more bits. So we've obviously got the different tail section for the B, for the F, sorry, and the bell. Looking absolutely terrific. What we got here? Oh, bits for the, uh, no, this is the only staple I've seen. Let me just close that up because you don't want to hear the old girl. So we've got the rear part for the gun, for the tail gunner, with the sight all looking nice little bits. Obviously, it was different. The F is different to the G. We've also got the uh, ammo boxes, part of the upper turret. Bits and pieces looking really, really good. Everything's fine where it needs to be and thick and clunky, which it would be in real life where it needs to be too. Fabulous. Right. Let's just, seems like the internet is holding up, which is good. Put them all the way. I don't want none of them broken. The tail. got our rear that's even in a separate sealed bag which is nice right this is always important the glazing is fabulous absolutely brilliant clarity no scratching there's two so obviously there's one for the bell and one for a standard F. It's a bit, bit of an odd way of doing it, but hey ho, one way of getting it out. The tail canopy for the tail gunner is absolutely covered in riveting. Again, superbly molded and crystal, crystal clear. Fabulous. Now, to me, on this bird, this is one of the most important parts, which is the clear, because there is a lot of it. Here's another look. Take that round. And there's two or three screws in here. that's safe right there's two right so we have this is for the F that must be for the G and the F so that's a mixture right okay clarity I'm just gonna find something like that so you can see the claret where I can see it myself the clarity Across, want to go across. Okay, they're not hard to mold these, but it's good. It's crystal clear. There is rivets everywhere there needs to be. Let's blow you away. Now, here we go. So our windscreen. A little bit. It's hard to show you how what I'm talking about, but it looks like. No, I lied. It's crystal clear. It's to the angle I was looking at. It is absolutely crystal clear, covered in rivets, again, as it should be. The turrets, the ball turret, again, perfectly formed. No scratches. I've got a hair going across that. That's easy to get rid Excuse me. Get rid of your dome. Astral dome is there. Again, crystal clear. I mean, 
Whew. This, if you imagine, how can I put up? If you imagine the Rebel B-17F Memphis Bell as, let's say, a steam train, this is more like, this is more like the high-speed train in Japan. That's the difference between those two kits in detail, in my opinion. I know Richard's here. He's had a pop. He had a good look at his because he did mention the ejection pin marks to me on the uh, Bombay. Um, which, I, in some ways, I understand. But if you, Rich, like Rich, will back me up, I hope. They've done an amazing job on everything, apart from the Bombay. They've let themselves down, and that's the only thing. I'm just clearing a few things up. Bear with me. And I'll bring the box lid back on top. I put the stuff back in the box lid just to protect it while I'm doing this. Um, I haven't built anything HK, but I will be building this 100% certain. I think it's it looks great. It's it's going to be a nice size. I think it's worth every penny of the hundred pound. I think they've taken their time. They've done it properly. And we did see this, a mock-up of this at Telford 2019. I don't want to bend that. We're in this if I'm not careful. I don't really want to bend that up. But hey-ho. That's it. That's it. Um, we saw a mock-up, and I loved it then when I saw it, along with the Lancaster. She was big, but we all know how big the Bell is. We all know how big a Lancaster is. But the deal breaker for me on this is multiple things, which is the amount of detail on the external of the fuselage, which I think is absolutely fantastic. Put that there. I'll clear that one up. You know, I'm... I'm really impressed with what they've done and I think HK should be very proud of themselves and it took me an hour to do this review so there's a heck of a lot of plastic a heck of a lot of detail a heck of a lot of work gone into building this um, creating this and I think they've really 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 done well Yes, and they do. I didn't say that, but they do come off, don't they? So you could transport it. It's a bit like the Herc, where you take the top wing off and it's easier to transport. Fabulous. So is it worth 100 quid? Yeah, easily. Would it be worth a bit more? Mm, probably. We don't know until it goes together. But yeah, so... You know, I'm I'm quite pleased with what's in the box. She is going to be built. Um, I have a few in the queue. I'm building the car. <clears throat> Thanks, Fred. Um, I'm building the um, finishing off the eagle. Like I said, life does sometimes get in the way, as you all know. Um, just while I'm sort of talking away, if anybody knows of Wish, which is an online company in China, um, we pay four quid over here for tomato tape. This is Kabaki tape, and it comes from Wish. There's multiples in there. What is there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight reels, nine reels in there, and that cost me a tenner. Oh, fabulous. 
absolutely brilliant. And it's as good as Tamaya tape, if not better. Just a quick tip <laughs> as we go. So, yeah. Well, you know, if you've got any questions, ask. I'll be here for a few more minutes. Obviously, we're not getting clicked off in every half an hour, which is wonderful. But I'm going to take a sip of water because I've got a sore throat now. Talking too much, as I always do. But I'm very impressed. Um, all round, great kit. £100, go and get it. I know they're in stock at Hannant's in Lowestoft. And Nikki at the trainers has them. It's not really a lot I can say. For a Chinese company, this is just fabulous. Go out and buy one. So, I'm going to call it a night, and I'm going to get myself ready for bed. I shall be in bed in about 20 minutes, because I'm up early, all at quarter past eight. I think that's worth it, Fred. I really do. I mean, Richard's got one. He loves his, apart from that work you've got to do on the Bombay. With the cartograph decals, the little foot wet sheet with the seat belts, it just makes all the difference. And... I would love just to go have the time to count all the rivets on that wing because that there must be three to four thousand rivets just on or top of a wing. It's ridiculous. So kudos to HK, Hong Kong Models. You did a lovely job. And I'm quite happy with that. Right, I'm going to say cheerio. Have a great week. I'll be back hopefully either Friday or Saturday night. I don't know which yet. You all stay safe, especially you, Richard. You know what I'm talking about. Roger, send me that email. I'll sort that out later. And I'll talk to you all soon. Have a great week. Look after yourselves. Good night.